two or can I scroll up on this? Oh yeah, no, I got, let me start with one. Solve them graphically and algebraically. Well, do you know how to do either one? Um, partially. Okay, which one? Let's do, let's start there. Um. Actually, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm still a little blank from. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me draw my snapshot. Let's start with graphing them. Which one is easier to graph, the top one or the second one? Um, the second. Okay. Graph it for me. Tell me how to graph it. So you put the plus three on the y-axis. Okay. And then um, you put the negative two. What is the negative two? What is that? The x-intercept. The slope. The slope. So you need a second point to make this a straight line. That is a linear function. So it's all I need is one more point, and I'll be able to connect the two dots and have my straight line. How do I get the second point if I know the slope is minus 2? Um, do you do the up 1 over 2? It's rise over run. So it's got to be up 2 over 1. Yeah. Well, and that's going to give me which way do I got to go over because it matters. I'm dealing with a negative slope. I got to make sure my line is a negative slope. You have to go left then. Okay, so I go up two. And just for accuracy, I'm going to go up four. One, two, three, four, and go over two. There's a slope of negative 2. Okay. That's this line here. Now, the equation above, what is that? Is that a straight line? What is that? Um, I don't believe so. It's a parabola. It's quadratic. Yeah. All quadratics are parabolas. And I know it's a quadratic because it's in perfect vertex format. Where's the vertex of that? Um, negative 3. Vertex is both points, H and K. Well, there's, nothing's at negative 3, but there's a point that has an x and a y coordinate on it that represents the vertex. Here's the standard format for vertex format. With the vertex being h and k. So, in this equation that we're looking at, what is H and what is K? H is 1 and K is negative 3. Okay. So, I go 1, negative 3. Well, that's where the vertex is. Does it open up or down? It opens up. Okay. And it's got a vertical stretch factor of 2, which makes it a little skinny. And we could do a lot more math here to be a little more accurate. But I'm going to skip the extra math just to give you an idea. We're already going to have to solve it algebraically. 
There's the parabola. Twice as skinny as a normal parabola. Okay. And I just guessed at the skinniness of it. And the only reason is I don't want to go through all the math to find two other points on this line. And there would be quite a bit of math. I would have to solve for the x-intercepts if I really wanted to know where it went through the x-axis. And that's a lot of math. That's So I'm going to estimate it for the purposes of this problem only so that we don't spend the entire hour on this one problem. Okay? Where is my solution graphically? Um... Just describe it without it be, giving the points. Uh, it's where everything crosses. In other words, yeah. That's one solution, the X and Y coordinate. And that's another solution, the X and the Y coordinate. That's how you solve a system graphically, is you graph both equations and then wherever they cross, that's my answer. Now, if I had to guess here, I would say that's x equal 2, y equals 0. That's one answer. And this one up here, I would say x equals minus 1, and y equals perhaps 1, 2, 3, we'll call it 3. Now, I'm guessing, but that sometimes is the best you can do when you try to solve a system graphically because sometimes they intersect in between grid lines. It's very difficult to figure out exactly where they intersect, even if you had two perfectly graphed graphs. Okay? That's why graphing it is not the best method. They teach it but it's never the best method. The best method is algebraic. So let's solve this thing algebraically. Now, first of all, if y equals that, and the same y equals that, what can I say? If I'm solving uh, algebraically. They're both equal to y. So what does that mean? That they're the same. They're equal to each other. So I'm going to make the left side. They have to be equal to each other. There's no way y can be equal to y unless these two lines are equal to each other. Okay, you with me? Yeah. Now, this is going to give us a quadratic to solve. So, first of all, i got to expand this. So, let me do that. I get 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3 equals minus 2x plus 3. Now, I distribute it, so I get 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus 3 equals minus 2x plus 3. And finally, I gather everything on one side of the equation. That's how you solve all quadratics. You get everything on one side, and you put 0 on the other. Well, I've got uh, a 2x here. I'm going to write it in blue, just because i got a lot of scribbling on here. So i got 2x squared. We got minus 4x plus 2x, so that's minus 2x. And then I've got a negative 1 minus 3 more, so I got a negative 4 equals 0. You see how I got from that to this? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the best, next best thing to solving this? Um, should you factor it? Yes, but before we factor it as a difficult quadratic, difficult because there's no 1 in front of the x squared, it's a number other than 1, is there anything I can do about that? 
Uh, can you reduce it? I can. I can divide everything in this equation by the number 2. Yep. That makes that x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Notice that 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And now factor that. Now we're going to have our answers. Almost. Um, so 2x's and then a minus and a plus. And it's going to be um, x minus 2 plus 1. Uh -huh. In other words, the bigger, there's only two factors for the number 2. That's 2 and 1. And the bigger of those factors has to go with the sign of the middle term. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell me about my answers? X equals what? Um, so X equals 2 and negative 1. Now I need a Y point also. When x is equal to 2, what is y equal to? Um, you just put it in the equation, right? Uh-huh. Choose the simplest equation, the linear one. Um, so 2 for x. Tell me what y is. Negative 1. Uh -huh. Now substitute negative 1 for x and tell me what y is. 5. So here's your solution. x is equal to 2, y equals minus 1. That's this point here. The other solution is x equal minus 1, y equal 5. And that's that point right there. So whenever you're solving a system like this and you have multiple solutions, the advantage of doing it graphically is that when you do it graphically first, you see that there are two solutions and each one has an X and a Y value with it. So you know kind of what you're looking for. When you do it algebraically, the first thing you solve for is X only. So you have to take, but we get two different values for x. So you have to take both of them, plug it into the simplest equation, and figure out the y value, the corresponding y value for that x value. And you can see that my graph wasn't all that accurate. My best guess on the graph was 2 comma 0. I was off there. Should be 2 comma minus 1. And the other side, I had minus 1, 3, when in fact it's minus 1, 5. Only because my graph wasn't as accurate as it could have been. And if they said, come up with the answer graphically only, well, then I would have done whatever math I would have had to do to get those graphs as accurately as possible. B. Equations are the same. We've got a quadratic and a linear. Uh, graph them first. Graph the linear one first. So negative 1 on the y-axis, and then it has a slope of negative x. No, not uh, negative x. Remember, the slope is the coefficient of x. Okay. So what is the slope? Um, is it 1? Negative 1. Negative 1. Coefficient. If I were to write that with the coefficient written in, it would look like that. It's just the 1 is not written. It's one of those 1s that is implied. But it's still negative 1 is the coefficient of x. So I go down to here. 
to get a second point. And now I got to connect those. I know it's a straight line. I have a hard time drawing a straight line, but we're not going to really answer it graphically anyway. Now, how do I graph the top equation? What is that again? Um, quadratic. Which is what kind of a graph? A vertex. It's a parabola. Oh, yeah, parabola. And the most important point on a parabola is the vertex. Where is this vertex? It is at um, 4 and 5. Negative 4. You have to always remember the standard format. All math. You've got, if you don't know the standard format, you can't do these problems. There's the standard format. Well, with what we're looking at, A is minus 1, H is minus 4, and K is 5. So the vertex is at minus 4 plus 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 plus 5 puts me right there, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Does this open up or down? Um, down. Yeah, if it opened up, we wouldn't have any points that intersected. So yeah. we know it opens down because of the negative sign. And it's negative 1, so it's going to have a fairly typical width. In other words, it's going to look like a fairly normal parabola, like that. And again, trying to figure out what that point is and what this point. Hmm, it's a futile exercise. So let's solve it algebraically. Tell me what I do next. Um, so you're going to make them equal to each other? Okay, so I got minus x plus 4 squared plus 5, that's the top one, equals minus x minus 1. What next? Um, now you are going to... Um, I'm not sure. There's no. really only one thing you can do. Expand it. In other words, I'm looking at an x plus 4 squared. So expand that. What is x plus 4 squared equal to? x plus 4, x plus 4. Multiply them together. That's what x plus 4 squared means. It means x plus 4 times x plus 4. Do that multiplication and tell me what you get. X squared plus 16. No. Nope. You have to foil it. You have to oh. that, times that, that times that, that times that, and that times that. Add all four terms together. Okay. So... Um, x squared it's actually a really easy way to do it but you got to memorize it it's the one thing times the other times 2 plus 16 now what's the next step um so now, do you have to remove the parentheses? Get, How do you remove the parentheses? Um, do you square it? No, you have to distribute this negative sign to all three terms that are in the parentheses. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what do you, what do you get? So negative x squared minus 8x, minus 16, and then plus 5 equals negative x minus 1. Now combine everything on one side. 
Which side? So you, huh? Which side should we use? Uh, do you just take the two from the right side? The only problem with that is it's going to leave me with a negative sign in front of my x squared. That's going to make it awfully difficult to factor. So if you want to make the factoring easier, we're going to move everything on the left to the right. Because okay. when I move this negative x squared to the right, it becomes positive x squared. So that takes care of that. Okay. Now if I move the minus 8x to the right and combine it with the minus x, I get plus 7x. And if I combine all three numbers on the right side, I've got, let's see, minus 11, so I've got to add 11, so plus 10. So that's what my equation looks like. Now tell me what to do. Notice okay. if everything would have been on the left side, it would have looked like this. That's much harder to factor. Yeah. So the only thing that really caused me to move it to the right was knowing that I wanted the x squared to have a positive coefficient, not a negative one. Now, finish the problem. You got to solve so now x, and then you got to come up with an x and a y, two sets of x, y coordinates. Just like the first problem was. So, first you factor it, and it's x plus 2 um, and x plus 5. And then, so for your x coordinates, it's x minus 2 and x equals minus 5. Um, so then you plug it in for the y. Not for the y. Um, oh, in the uh, linear equation. You, okay, good. But you put um, it for the x, okay? So put neg for negative two, it would be um, negative three. No, it's a negative negative two. That's a positive two. Oh, so it'd be one. Okay. And then four, and then it'd be four for the other. Okay. So what's your answers? So x equals negative 2 and y equals 1. That's 1 and, and x equals ne negative 5 and y equals 4. And that's the other answer. And we can see from the graph that we would expect to have two answers with an x and y value at each one. All right, let's go on. Now. Those were two equations, and I had a choice of solving them graphically or algebraically. When you get to inequalities, you don't really have that choice anymore. You can only solve this thing graphically. Okay? So, let's try to do it. Let's take number 2a. Let me start it. Which one do I want to start with? Um, I guess the bottom one. Okay. The linear one is always a little easier to graph. How do I graph it? Um, so 2 on the y-axis. Ooh, hold on a second. <laughs> Got to take my snapshot. What's the three fourths equal to? Um. How do I get a second point? I got one point for this straight line that I want to draw. How do I get a second point? You go up to over one. Oh, 
What's the slope of this equation? Uh, three fourths. So what do I do again? Do you go down then? Okay. This is the rise. This is the run. So when you say up or down, that's got to be the numerator. So I got to go up by three. And then what? And then over four. Which way? Um, right. Correct. Because I want the slope to be positive. So I go up three, over to the right by four. Whoops. No, that's correct. Okay. And now I have to decide whether I'm going to draw a solid line or a dotted line. And that's always the case with inequalities. When you're graphing an inequality on an XY coordinate system, you have to know whether it's a solid line or a dotted line. Which is it in this case? Uh, dotted? <laughs> no, it's less than or equal. That's oh, so it's all. The top one's going to be dotted, but this one is yeah. solid. Now I got to pick a side to shade. Um, well, always look to the y axis when you're trying to figure out which side to shade. The answer is always above or below that line, it's never right or left. So, what is it in this case? Above. What does it say? Y is what? Oh, okay, below, because it's less than. Yeah, it's easy. Just look at this part right here. That's the only part you need to look at. If it's less than, then we're going to go this way. That whole region. Okay. Now we're going to graph the upper parabola and shade it. And whichever, if there is a region on the graph that has both shading, that'll be our solution. Okay. Now, the upper one is a little harder to graph because it's not in vertex format. So I can't start with the um, vertex. Although I could figure it out what the vertex is. Let's do that. What's the easiest way for you to graph the quadratic? Notice uh, that in B, it is in vertex format. I'm going to be able to graph that really easily. But in A, it's not in vertex format. So you got a couple of choices. You actually have a lot of choices. You can figure out where the vertex is based on the x-coordinate of it is minus b over 2a. Or you can factor it, which puts it into x-intercept format. And then we can figure out how to graph that. Or we could complete the square and put it into vertex format, which isn't a bad idea. It depends on how much you hate completing the square. Or whether you know how to complete the square, I should say. I would say each method is about equally hard. I'm not sure that one is easier than another. I, I would actually say completing the square is probably the best thing to do. All right, let's complete the square then. Okay. And that's something you have to know how to do. You just have to. You have to know how to complete the square. You separate the terms that have the variable, put them together, and then complete the square inside the parentheses. So what do I got to do to complete the square inside the parentheses? Um... Right now, it reads exactly the same as it read. It's x squared minus 2x minus 3. So 
All of yeah. you added parentheses, and I want to complete the square. I got to know the technique for completing the square. You got to memorize that. They're not going to ever tell it to you. Yeah. Um, we we complete the square differently, I think. No, I don't think so. There's only one way to complete the square. You take half of this coefficient and you square it. What's half of minus two? One. And then square it. It's still one. Okay, so I'm going to add one inside the parentheses. That completes the square, but I just changed the value of everything, unless I also subtract one. Now, what I have written is the same thing that I started with. The advantage is that because I completed the square, how can I write the middle term or the first term? What is x squared minus 2x plus 1 going to be in terms of this kind of format? In other words, it can uh, definitely be written as a linear term squared. Would it be 2x plus 1 squared? No, it's x minus 1. It's x minus whatever you got when you took half that coefficient. So, this is the same exact parabola as they gave us. The only thing is, we now know where the vertex is. So, we have a starting spot. Where is the vertex? Um, it's minus 1, minus 4. It's plus 1 minus 4. Plus 1 minus 4. Remember, it's x minus h squared plus k. So it's plus 1 minus 4. There's the vertex. Now, since I'm solving this thing totally by graphing, I want my x-intercepts. I need to have two good points. I don't want to approximate it like I did before. Okay. Well, the best way to get the x-intercepts is to put it in x-intercept format, which I can do really easily. In other words, here I'm going to tell you what x-intercept format is. y equals a, and it's the same a, only here we have x minus p and x minus q, where p and q are my x-intercepts. Okay. Well, can you factor that thing? Yes. To what? Um... Um, it'd be a plus and a minus, and then wait a a two x and negative three p and q. First factor, and then I'll tell you what p and q are. Um. Here's what we're factoring over here. Oh, uh, okay. Um, x plus x plus one and x minus three. Yeah. Okay. So that is written in x-intercept format, and that tells me where to make my x-intercepts. Where are they? At negative one and three. Correct. So this parabola has to go through negative 1, and it has to go through 3. There's three points. That's all I need. So I'm going to draw the parabola in blue. Which side do I shade of the blue parabola? Um, it's going to be... Above or below? Below. Correct, because it's y is less than that parabola. And yeah. should that be a solid line or a dotted line? That'd be dotted. Correct. 
let me erase what I put in there, um, which is easier said than done. Uh, here. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just erase little bits of it like that. Here, now it's a dotted line, okay? Okay. Am I above or below the dotted line? Uh, above. What's it say? Oh, less than, so below. Okay, always. And in this case, below means this. In other words, what I first do is go to the y-axis. I find a point below the line. Now that tells me which side to shade of the parabola. Okay. Now, the solution is wherever I have blue and red. So my solution, let me just choose a third color here, green, is this area here. Not Why would it be? in that middle section. Well, because it's below the red line, but it's below the blue dotted line. If it was the middle section, it would have to be greater than the parabola. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. Okay. It's a little different. Normally, they would make it that middle section because that looks prettier. But because of the two inequalities they gave us, we really don't have any choice. Now, the difference between inequalities and equations is well illustrated here. This is my only solution. I can show it to you graphically. It's very hard to explain algebraically. I can't exactly say x equals 2 and y equals 4 or anything like that, right? I'm trying yeah. to describe to you an area of the graph. Well, the only way to do that is this way, graphically. I cannot describe this algebraically to you. The best way to describe it algebraically is right there, those two inequalities. If you have to describe it algebraically, this is the solution. Okay? Okay. So that's why I was so specific to graph that parabola correctly because it needs to be, I'm not going to come up with an algebraic solution with this problem like I did with number one. I only have a graphical solution, so I need the, the line to be correct and I need the parabola to be graphed correctly. And notice I had to do quite a bit of work to graph that parabola. I had to complete the square to find its vertex, and then I had to factor it to find its x-intercepts. So you always got to find three points on a parabola, especially if it's a problem like this where you want it to be precise. Let's see if we can do B here. One second. All right. This time, let's do the parabola first. What format is this in? Quadratic. Mm, it is a quadratic, but there's multiple formats for a quadratic. There's vertex format. There's x-intercept format, and there's standard format. Which one is this in? Um, is it just standard? Vertex. Vertex. Here's vertex format. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. That's what we're looking at here. We're looking at an X minus a minus 1. So H is minus 1, 
k is minus 2. So the fact that they gave it to us in vertex format allows me to graph it. At least I can graph the vertex almost immediately. Where's the vertex? Uh, negative 2 and 1. Hmm. Get it in the right order. A 1 and negative 2? Nope. What's h? h is negative 1. Okay. What's k? Negative 2. Oh, it's negative 1 comma negative 2. Okay. Right there. Whoops. Hold on. So that's the vertex. Now, um, I guess I'm always a little mixed on what's the best way to find two more points. What's true on my x-intercepts about y? Um, what is true about y when you're on the x-axis? Um, what is the value of y whenever you're on the x-axis? No matter where you're at on the x-axis, what's the y-coordinate? Um, it's the y coordinate when I'm there. Zero, zero. What's the y? No, I just said what's the y coordinate? What's oh, the y zero. coordinate when I'm here? What's the y zero. coordinate when I'm there? What's the y coordinate when I'm there? It's always zero. zero. Yeah. Same thing when I'm talking about the y intercept, x is always zero. So, therefore, we can figure out the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and solving the equation. So, over here on the left, I'm going to set the y equal to 0. And I'm going to write it as an equation because I'm trying to figure out how to solve for the x-intercepts. I don't need it as an inequality yet. Now, this is a little easier to solve than a typical quadratic. I don't have to multiply this out and turn it into a quadratic to solve it. What's an easy way to solve this? Um, Let's plan on solving it by taking the square roots of both sides. Okay. I can't do it yet until I get rid of that negative 2. So I move the 2 over, giving me this. You with me? Yep. Now, this is one of the few times where you do not solve a quadratic by leaving everything on one side and 0 on the other. I could, if I wanted to expand this x plus 1 out, I could square it, subtract 2, factor it, solve for the x-intercepts. But in this case, it's actually easier to move the 2 over and then take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of both sides, what do you get? Um, you get square root of 2. Actually, you get plus or minus the square root of 2. Remember that whenever you solve an equation by taking the square root of both sides, start your answer out with the words plus or minus, always, 100% right. of the time. And then equals x plus 1. Yeah. Now we can solve there's going to be two x points, which is what we expect. We're looking at a quadratic. So I would expect there to be two x-intercepts. Well, what do we get? We get x equals the plus square root of 2 minus 1, and we get x equals the minus square root of 2 minus 1. Okay, that number is 0.41. So there's one x-intercept. 
This number is minus 2.41, so there's our other x-intercept. Now, is that going to be a solid parabola or a dotted parabola? Um, solid. Okay. Which side are we shading? Um, below. Always look to the y-axis to answer that question. You don't have to look at anything else. Because all you got to do is look at the y and the sign. Yeah, and isn't it less than? What does that sign mean? Well, y is greater than. Okay. Or e to the equal y to. axis. So we've got to be above this thing. Okay. We're in this area. Okay. Yeah. Now we got to graph this. And that's a little harder to graph because they haven't given it to us in standard format. Everything else they give to us in y equal mx plus b, so it's really easy to graph. But this one, not so much. So let's put it into y equal mx plus b. So Gra y graph it first as an equation. Then look at it as an inequality and figure out which side to shade. And in order to figure out which side to shade, we're going to want it y is less than something. We're not going to want yeah. it x. We're going to want it in y equal mx plus b format. So take this equation and put it into y equals mx plus b. So y is less than or equal to um, negative x? No. First of all, you got to move the x to the other side. And then you've got to divide everything by 2. Um, so that gives you so positive x divided by 2. That's 1 half x. And then I've got to divide the 6 by 2. So that's that. Now I can graph it. It's real easy to graph it and figure out which side to shape. But you got to yeah. get it into the y equal mx plus b format in order to graph it and figure out the side to shade. I might be able to figure out how to graph that in its current format, but I would have a double of a time figuring out which side to shade because I don't have it in terms of y. Once I've moved it in terms of y, well, now it's really easy. Once I draw my line, I'll know which side to shade, which side. Wherever my line goes, which side am I going to shade? Um, below. Below, exactly, because it's y is less than or equal. Is this going to be a solid line or a dotted line? It's going to be solid. Okay. Where do I start? How do I draw it? We start at 3. And then it's going to be up one over two. Tell me right or left. Because over um, either. It would be right. Okay. So the second point goes there. I connect the two points. Which side am I shading? Below. Okay. That makes the common region this region right here. In other words, in this case, they did put it inside instead of outside. I honestly think that might have been a typo on their part. <laughs> that was a strange area to have to shade on the last problem, 2A. This is far more common. You're going to see that. If you see that, this looks right. If you see what we had in A, it actually doesn't look right when you first look at it, but it was.
It's all based on whether they're in equality, whatever it says. You have to do what they say. And if that produces a common region, then so be it. Sometimes it won't produce any common region, and there is no solution. But in this particular problem, the solution is any point that is in my blue shaded area. In other words, if they said is 0, 0, satisfy the solution, does it? Um, no. Well, 0, 0 is right here. Yeah. That's inside that blue area. Yeah. So that is part of the solution. Okay. Is 4, 1 part of the solution? Um, no. No, that's out, outside of that area. Is 0, 2 part of the solution set? Yes. Yeah, 0, 2 is right about there. That's inside that blue area. That's all you need to know. In this case, it has to be inside or on the edges. In other words, if I said, is that part of the solution? The answer is yes. Is this part of the solution? The answer is yes. If one of them is a dotted line, then no. Okay. In other words, how can I put this? Um, let me make... Yeah. Not what I wanted to do. I'm going to draw another problem very similar, only this time one of my lines is going to be dotted. So this is my common area, okay? Now, if I ask you, is this part of the solution true or false? Uh, true. False. In other words, if it's on the dotted line, no. If it's on a solid line, uh, yes. Okay. This would be in the solution set. So would this. But this, no. 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 Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Anything inside the area is in the solution set. And anything on a dotted line is in the solution set. Excuse me. A solid line is in the solution set. But if it's on the dotted line, it is not. Wow. Not sure I've ever spent. Well, it wasn't really two problems. It was four problems. And each one of them was tough. Uh, but that was a mouthful today, uh, figuring out problems one and two. And I'm going to let you go because I have a four o'clock. I got to go to All right. Thank you. You're welcome, Lachlan. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.